Welcome back. This is Nick Tasel's Plot. We're in Seoul, Korea right now at the Afrotech Intel Classic, the largest tournament in Korea with the largest prize pool. It's a real honor to be down here casting these games for all of you. We are halfway through today's games. They've all been action-packed and very intense. The results so far flash. Completely dominating Haya, and the same was true with Lucifer against Child. Lucifer making Protoss versus Zerg look pretty easy. The next game we've got coming up here is Anytime versus Dragoon. Anytime, a very well-known player. He did manage to defeat Baby um, previously in the event. And uh, now here he is taking on Dragoon. I think this is going to be a tough battle for Dragoon. Dragoon, more uh, known as a, uh, a team player um, for the pro team he represents. Um, I don't believe he practices also as much as other players, uh, and that's something that he's proud of. Um, he seems to be able to remain consistent without the um, constant training, although obviously there is some limit to how much uh, he could, you know, you can not train in StarCraft if you're on a pro team. You are required to play for a certain amount of time every day. Now, the first map is going to be Coliseum, so I think we may expect to see a similar build. Uh, to well, a similar build from what Lucifer did in that previous game. I think we could see, expect to see any time do a, uh, the similar uh, type of opening. Now, I'm curious as to how Dragoon is going to do that. It doesn't seem that most of these Zerg players have caught on to the uh, very simple Zealot Rush, well, a fast expand build, um, which has proven to be very effective on a Colosseum. Now, neither player has joined, actually. We did get them in here a few minutes late uh, during our break, so I might be rambling on like this uh, for a little bit longer than normal. By the way, special thanks to our sponsors. We really appreciate you guys making this possible. Everybody down there at Intel, go buy an Intel computer. Go. Go do it. Because of people like Intel, pro gaming events are possible, so we really appreciate all the support we can get. And, of course, thank you if we don't get hits um, on this, we would not be able to bring more uh, StarCraft events in the future, so we appreciate the support. Now, um, no, we're still waiting for these guys to join the game. Maybe they're beating the single player first before they uh, decide to enter, but I think we should be getting this done soon enough. Anytime is one of these players who's uh, he's got excellent micro and is really able to pull off Oop, okay, I thought, that confused me for a second. He's really able to pull off um, some very interesting strategies. Um, some that we really haven't seen that many other um, Protoss players do, like the time that he beat Yellow um, by constantly flooding him with uh, Dark Templars. Um, managed to make Tempest plays uh, that time. A very interesting game. Dragoon we know a little bit less about. He's just uh, not in the limelight as much. But he's certainly good. Um, he was, of course, seeded uh, into the tournament. Uh, like most of the gamers I've been broadcasting for you guys today, uh, more than half of them have been seeded. They did get auto birth into the halfway point of the tournament because they were so accomplished. It wasn't really necessary for them to uh, work their way up at the 128 marker. Anytime. Um, I think most people recognize Anytime for his excellent Protoss versus Terran. At least that's what sticks out in my mind when I think of Anytime, although he's certainly very strong at the other matchups. Um, I have been told by some people, because to be honest, I have not seen very many of Dragoon's games, uh, that he's got a pretty aggressive style. We'll see um, if he sticks with such an aggressive style on uh, a map like this. And I think pretty soon here, okay, now we do have Dragoon in the game. So I think Anytime is going to be joining here um, within a few minutes. I certainly hope everyone at home is enjoying the games. It's a lot of fun broadcasting these games. And just so you guys know, I am not the only English StarCraft caster. There are many others out there. Check uh, YouTube or check the TSL hosted by Team Liquid. I think, um, what else can I say? What else can I fill this void of time with until this game gets started? Anytime is definitely um, one of these players who's pretty consistent, pretty strong, 
It doesn't really have any weak points, uh, so to speak. Uh, he generally doesn't make any critical decisions late game, for instance, that would cause him to lose. He's not a player who might be able to outmass you but miscontrols his army. He's just all around solid. And he's been around here for a while. Um, he really started becoming a really big deal um, after he was defeating Nada. Um, I don't know. I don't remember which uh, Star League it was in, uh, but it was a while ago. But yeah, he just he's been growing in popularity ever since then. He also has a lot of um, adoring female fans. Oh, and I see he's joined the game as well. So I think we're going to get this going here pretty soon. I'm wondering if uh, this hatchery first build that a lot of these Zerg players have been doing is the way to go on a um, in, well, you know, in, in in a matchup like this on a map like this. Um, I'm curious to see if Zergs are going to start doing something else pretty soon here uh, as the meta game on these maps evolves. <laughs> and special thanks, of course, again to Gom TV for hosting this event. We really appreciate it. Um, and expect to see many more of these in the future. Also, try to check out the WoW tournaments. We have uh, two games a week of those, so feel free to uh, take a peek at that. And I think we're going to get this game going, so let's get ready. Here we go, anytime at the bottom right. And that gives us, of course, Dragoon at the bottom left. Now, do not be confused. Dragoon is not the Protoss player. That is any time. Now, why did a Zerg player name himself Dragoon? That is one of the great mysteries of the StarCraft uh, universe. And um, pretty soon here, we're going to see exactly uh, what type of build orders uh, will unfold here. I doubt we're going to see the Protoss proxy gate, even though it's certainly a possibility. Um, simply because this build that all these Protoss players have been doing on this map uh, seems to be pretty uh, pretty solid to the point where there's really no need to uh, do something that would be so aggressive that you could risk losing a game early on. Now we're getting a shot of both of these players. Anytime always has that same facial expression uh, before each game starts. Also note, he will find his opponent pretty quickly. Uh, did he actually spot the creep there? Um, uh, <laughs> Alright, I think we may have seen Anytime make a small mistake here, which could turn out to be pretty, pretty big unless I'm confused. I do believe that he, yeah, he is, did not spot uh, the creep. He pulled out too quickly. We saw something similar to this happen before. So now he's wasting an, an additional probe as he scouts. This is not good uh, at all. Anytime wasting another probe, uh, which is unnecessary, he's going to realize his mistake right away. Yeah, and as you can see, look at it, we're getting a shot of his own screen. You can see he realizes, oh crap, I, uh, I pulled out too quickly. He is going to go ahead and pass expand. Now he realizes he is going to get nine pulled. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, he should be prepared for it though. Especially because you can wall in so easily on this map. And uh, rather than actually rushing, he's going to go ahead and try to get the scouting probe. Now, one advantage about nine pulling is that the Protoss really uh, loses intel um, before the Corsair comes out. And that's mainly because uh, when the Zerglings get that speed upgrade, it's almost impossible to maneuver a scouting probe um, around. Expect to see a gateway here pretty soon. <laughs> gateway.
gateway and a simulator, of course. Looks like Anytime's going to try to sneak a probe out here, or at least check to see if there are any masked up Zerglings outside of his base. There are none. Many times, if uh, a player nine pulls, there is a possibility that you're going to see a whole bunch of Zerglings, like maybe uh, a little bit over a dozen, rush in there and try to kill you off um, so that you really can't uh, fast expand it successfully. But in this case, uh, we are not uh, going to see uh, any such uh, attempt by Dragoon. Probably a wise decision as well, considering that uh, there's really, I mean, good players like this generally don't lose to something like this. Note that uh, Anytime was not doing the build, which we had been seeing quite a bit of on this map, is instead going for the pretty typical fast expand build. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Dragoon going to go for another expansion. Pretty common to see Zerg. Uh, get two extra, uh, get an extra expansion just to stay ahead. Uh, Zerg always want to be ahead at least by one expansion. Otherwise, if you end up even in expansions, it's usually a strong indicator that you're getting behind, that you're losing. Looks like he may try to catch that, uh, that zealot. The lair is on the way, nearing completion. We don't see a hydralis den just yet. Or if we if he has one, we haven't gotten a shot of it just yet. Here is the Citadel. So we're gonna see a different build than what we saw in the previous Protoss versus Zerg. Den and Spire. And it looks like, yeah, he look at this Overlord. Zerg, of course, sacrificed the Overlord. Um, just so he could take a look at what's going on in his opponent's base. Look at any times micro. Will he get lose this? Oh, yeah, he will lose one. Uh, Zealot, but I think that turned out to be a win for um, for any time. He did manage to take out so many Zerglings. So Corsair DT, at least is the early game strategy here for any time. You can get that Corsair out and bully the Overlords into basically staying into the Zerg base. Meanwhile, you get that Dark Templar out, you have some map control. And we do see a lot of speed Zerglings up here. Dragoon remaking that, he wants to keep control of uh, any ground units coming out of that entrance. Man, he cannot. Okay, he's gonna lose his Corsair. Looks like. I believe. Look at that micro, though. If you can get the Corsair at just the right angle, if you can make him turn it just that right angle, um, you can delay the scores so that can't quite catch it. I think it's something like a 45 degree angle, and indeed he did manage to save that. Very impressive. Unfortunately, uh, that is wow. I really thought he was gonna lose it back there. Anytime. Like I said, uh, really has no major weakness, no Achilles heel that you can focus your attention on in order to beat him. Two lurkers are out, and they are going to own up this gateway, I think. I assume that's what's going to happen. As we can see, anytime he's going to try to sneak this Dark Templar in here. But no, he might get it surrounded! Really bad news if you lose that first Dark Templar. You don't have that map dominance or even that defense that you wanted. But now uh, he's going to go for the uh, Templar tech. Looks like uh, anytime he's confident he can break uh, that entrance 
or at least get to that expansion with that small number of units, I believe four Zealots and a Dragoon, which he very well may be able to do. Three Corsairs out here. Dragoon will lose some Overlords. Um, in fact, Dragoon losing a lot of Overlords, but the ground attack has failed. Wow, okay, a lot of uh, very effective Overlord harassment here by any time. Really dealing a lot of damage here. And... Oh! He still manages to get that last Overlord, though. Anytime. Uh, definitely getting a little bit of an advantage there. Even though he lost the bulk of his ground army, I think he got, I, I want to say, over maybe four Overlords. Very impressive. As we can see, Zerg is now entering this, um... Oh, this is a pretty typical Zerg tech tree. A very strong one to follow, though, of uh, this tech pattern. Uh, they're going to contain the Protoss with Lurkers and use Zerglings so that since the Protoss is forced to get Dragoons, uh, the Zerglings counter them pretty nicely. Uh, he'll upgrade to the Hive, get the Adrenaline upgrade, the Adrenal Glands, and, um... Basically stick with mostly Zerglings and Lurkers until his opponent breaks out and then switch to Ultralis very quickly. Assuming that the Zerg can get a fourth gas, though. So right now, the Protoss' burden is to try to um, escape this Lurker contain, to try to break out, break free. Scorch are also going to make it very difficult. This will force Protoss to upgrade the Observer speed. Note that we can see Dragoon is using the uh, Scourge. Um, although I should really start calling them Scourge since that's uh, how you pronounce it. Um, He's using that to keep his opponent contained. He can't even use shuttles to storm drop. I see anytime is actually uh, expanding at the top right. This is pretty smart, though, because uh, if he does break the contain, he can automatically transfer probes as if the contain never even happened. Dragoon should really uh, be looking out for that, though. This is not uncommon for Protoss players to do. And it looks like he actually is scouting for that. He has found it! And I think we may see a counterattack, or at least an attack on that expansion. This would be an ample opportunity for any time to break out. Anytime realizes the expansion has been spotted. He's going to try to break out now. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do it, though. Those zealots were not coming in there at the best angle. And losing Templars like this really hurts you. So many Lurkers out here. I'm surprised Dragoon hasn't uh, used some Scourge to uh, crash into those Observers. As you can see, a lot of Zerglings here for Dragoon. And it looks like he's breaking out of the contain now. Will he have enough, though? Are his upgrades in favor of holding off these Zerglings? There are a lot of them! Oh! My god! No, he did not! It failed! Unbelievable! Dragoon doing fantastic this game! Oh, easy, Dragoon. You haven't won just yet. Anytime you can see very focused Dragoon. Man, look at that guy. He was probably a barbarian in a previous life. That guy is a beast.
The Defiler's out. Plague's going to be very strong, as will uh, Dark Swarm. And, um, yeah, I don't know if any time's going to be able to break this contain. Very nice uh, Dark Swarm, but an equally nice Storm here by any time. He needs to get away from that Dark Swarm, though. The Dragoons are not going to do any damage underneath that. Another nice surround here by Dragoon. Anytime in terrible condition right now. Wow. Okay, so we see Overlord Speed, of course, is already done. We may see drops used to keep the Protoss pin. Look at this. Anytime is getting starved. He is going hungry. This is all he has is that expansion over there at the top right. The other expansions might as well be depleted. And he has to get his probes there. The only way he can do that is to break this contain. Here he comes now moving out. And it looks like he may have managed to escape this. No. Look at this Plague. Oh, man. Plague. So strong against Protoss. They, of course, cannot heal their units. I think Anytime may be losing this. Um, although we don't see Dragoon taking up too much of the map. Uh, at least too quickly here. And Anytime has said good game. Well done by Anytime. Excuse me, not by Anytime. I couldn't even believe myself, Dragoon, the beast. Damn, that guy could kick some ass in my uh, in person. He is a monster, man. Uh, anytime is down one game. Can he come back and win this? We're going to find out here in a minute or two. I would be surprised if Anytime did get eliminated. Anytime, of course, getting in the top four of the GSI, no small feat. Wow. Okay, very typical play here by um, Dragoon. Uh, standard Lurker Contain uh, with Zerglings. Um, and then we saw some great Defiler usage there at the end. I am very impressed. I think... Um, I think it's going to be tough now for any time, um, unless he can really play, uh, or at least bring his A game um, in this next round. Andromeda is, of course, a different map, though. You are able to secure another expansion, uh, so Lurker contains...